So our topic for today is light independent reactions, also known as the Calvin cycle. But before we get into that, let's just do a quick overview of photosynthesis as a whole, just so that we're on the same page. So photosynthesis is the process by which cells synthesize organic molecules, such as glucose, from inorganic molecules, such as carbon dioxide and water, in the presence of sunlight. This process requires a photosynthetic pigment, such as chlorophyll, and can only occur in certain organisms, such as plants and some bacteria, which contain this specialized organelle called a chloroplast. The general formula for photosynthesis is 6 carbon dioxide plus 12 waters makes in the presence of light and chlorophyll makes glucose oxygen and water. So photosynthesis is a two-step process. The first step is the light-dependent reactions or photophosphorylation. In these reactions, light energy is converted into chemical energy or ATP. The second main step, which is the one that we're looking to, at today, is light-independent reactions in which chemical energy is used to synthesize organic compounds. So the chemical energy produced in light-dependent reactions is used in light independent reactions to synthesize these organic compounds. And there's going to be extra videos made on light dependent reactions and the process of photosynthesis as a whole, just to understand those processes in more detail. But today we're gonna to be focusing on the independent reactions. So in short, light independent reactions use the chemical energy derived from light dependent reactions to form organic molecules. And this is quite obvious because of the name, but I just wanna make it really explicit. Light independent reactions um, occur in the absence of light or they don't necessarily need light to happen. Whereas light dependent reactions are dependent on light, meaning that light must be present in order for these processes to take place. So light independent reactions occur in the stroma of the chloroplast. And this is because the stroma contains the appropriate enzymes and a suitable pH for the Calvin cycle to occur. And it's basically just an aqueous or a fluid fill space in the chloroplast. So there are three main steps in light independent reactions. So firstly, we have the carboxylation of ribulose biphosphate. Secondly, there's the reduction of glycerate 3 phosphate. And thirdly, we have the regeneration of ribulose biphosphate. Okay, so let me just quickly draw a diagram to represent the Calvin cycle, because I feel that sometimes in an exam it can be hard to explain the topic completely in words, and a drawing can really be helpful in expressing the more complex ideas. So let me just draw it first and then I will explain each step in more detail. I've just color-coded the diagram based on which step happens where. 
Again, you don't have to memorize the diagram. It's more important to understand each step and why it's happening. So the Calvin cycle firstly begins with a 5-carbon compound called ribulase biphosphate, or RUBP, as you can see here based on the key. An enzyme called Rubisco catalyzes the attachment of carbon dioxide to a molecule of RUBP. If you remember, I think it was topic two, we learned about Rubisco as an enzyme involved in photosynthesis. So this is exactly what's involved. This is exactly what it does. I mean, it's involved in the carbon fixation of um, a carbon dioxide to um, a ribulose biphosphate. So the re resulting six carbon compound is actually very unstable. So it breaks down into two, three carbon compounds called glycerate three, phosphate, or GP, as you can see here. Um, and again, a single cycle involves three molecules of RUBP, um, which results with six molecules of GP being made and three mo molecules of carbon dioxide being used. So in step two, the glycerate 3-phosphate is converted into triose phosphate using NADPH and ATP via a redox reaction, meaning that one species gains hydrogen and the other species loses the hydrogen. So NADPH is a cofactor, which is basically just a molecule that assists in biochemical reactions. So in this specific reaction, it works as a reducing agent, meaning that it reduces the GP whilst being oxidized itself. And the evidence for this is in this specific process here. So the NADPH um, loses hydrogen, meaning that it's oxidized, and this hydrogen is transferred to the GP molecule, which gains them and is hence reduced. This redox reaction is powered by the hydrolysis of ATP, which as you can see here, it's um, converted, it's a catabolic reaction, meaning that's converted into ADP plus a phosphate group. Um, and each GP requires one NADPH and one ATP, respectively, to form triose phosphate. So in a single Calvin cycle, six of each molecule is required. So of the six molecules of TP produced per cycle, one TP is used to form half a sugar molecule. This means that two Calvin cycles are re required to produce one glucose molecule, um, and even more are required to produce a polymer sugar or a polysaccharide, um, such as starch, um, such as starch, yeah. And the remaining five TP molecules are recombined to regenerate the stocks of RUBP of the ribulose biphosphate so that the Calvin cycle can continue um, as a cycle. It's not just a singular process. It's, it's, as the diagram shows, it's a continuous process. So the five three carbon molecules are converted into three five carbon molecules and the regeneration of this ribulose biphosphate requires energy um, derived from the hydrolysis of ATP again here. So this is a process that you'll see very commonly in many different biotopics. Whenever energy is required, um, ATP is always hyd hydrolyzed into ADP and three phosphates. It's also happened here. It's just a very common thing. So yeah, that's the Calvin cycle. The three main steps are here. So to finish up, let's take a look at a past exam paper question. Explain the light independent reactions of photosynthesis for nine marks. So we have to say nine of the following. Takes place in the stroma of the chloroplast, produces carbohydrates, ribose, ribulose biphosphate is a five carbon compound, carbon dioxide is fixed or added to ribulose biphosphate by the enzyme Rubisco, forms unstable 6-carbon compound, which splits into two molecules of glycerate 3-phosphate, and ATP and NADPH are produced in a light-dependent reaction. ATP provides the energy, GP reduced to triose phosphate, NADPH provides the hydrogen. Some 3-carbon sugars go to form hexosugars or glucose, some go to making more ribulose biphosphate, and this is called the Calvin cycle. So that's the practice question. I hope it helped. I hope the video has um, improved your understanding of the topic. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.